Friends, check it out. The FixDry NT1 Dual Filament Dryer. It's time to test it, so let's get cracking. All right, so of course, let's start with what we find in the box. Once again, it is the NT1. There we've got the lid. And there is the dryer. Let's slide out of the packing material. Of course, we've got a manual PFD tubing and a shroud or a deflector. And we'll remove the protective material from the cover. At this point, let's check the manual. First things first, do not insert a power cord when it's not in use. Do not touch the heating hole directly in order to avoid scalding. When unattended, please cut the power supply to prevent accidental fires. When the product malfunctions, please cut off the power and contact us or the distributor. Pictures and illustrations may be inconsistent with the actual product. And we are not responsible for any direct or indirect damages caused by product operation and modification and accidents caused by user inattention. Finally, this user manual can be modified without any prior notice. Those images are self-explanatory, so let's move to the next page. Installation steps, of course, open the cover, add the filament, maybe the Teflon tube if you want to use it. Of course, close the cover, plug it in, check the input voltage. And of course, we'll work with the control panel to set the time. Everything is just a single click after hitting the settings button, so I'll show you that on the actual device. Quickly, the shroud is only for when you're not sending the filament right to the printer. One quick note, the measured temperature and the humidity are both calculated inside the box in real time. And over here on the right, we have got the table. Notice you can find your filament the recommended temperatures, and of course, the time that you need to leave it in there. Big note, do not block the air intake area while it's working. All right, so first, this is how the deflector works. If you're running the filament into a printer, it'll roll, so it doesn't matter if the filament is being hit directly by the fan, but if you're just drying it by itself, you want this deflector so that it moves around instead of straight up at that chunk of filament all the time. I'm gonna leave that one in there because today I am gonna run it like that. Of course, we got the cover that goes on. Notice there are 10 different holes that you can feed filament out if you wanna run it from the printer. I will show you quick that it is a little bit snug, but that is awesome because it gives you a better compartment while you're drying your filament. And there you can see with a little bit of squeezing, it fits snugly together. Friends, before I power it on, let me talk about today's test. I have got some ancient Hatchbox ABS that was donated to me. I've had it in a bag with a bag of desiccant. Let's open this up, get it in the container, and let's set it up for drying out. All right, so once again, I'm gonna be using the deflector. I'm gonna set in my roll of ABS. And of course, let's make sure we got it closed up. Okay, so it's plugged in, let's power it on. As you can see, the display is super simple. Right now it's 35C, 48% humidity, and it's set for two hours. Now I want to adjust these so that it does the right amount. We simply tap this button and it's given us our temperature. Because I am doing ABS, 60 is fine, but I do want to show you how easy it is to switch between them. Once I click this again, I can change the time. Of course, I want two hours because it says that on the tab, it could be more than two hours. But once I've got that set, I can tap one more time because I could have done a half hour and now I'm just gonna let it reduce that humidity from the 47% that it is currently at. As we wait for that filament to dry, let's quickly check out the NT1 on the website. Of course, the first thing they mention, it's dust proof, moisture proof. Of course, it has heating and drying capabilities. Check it out, you can actually send it through any of the 10 holes, so you could work with two printers at once. It has a large capacity, so you can have 
3 kilograms of filament at the same time. It has a 110 watt PTC heater. Max temperature of 70 and up to 48 hours of drying time. It has 360 degrees of heating, which is aided by the diversion shroud, which evenly distributes heat to prevent melting and deforming. Due to the heating characteristics of PTC, it will be different in different locations, but that will not affect your dehumidification. Of course, you want a filament dryer because wet filament never turns out as awesome as dry filament. And then here is a filament dryer comparison chart. We've also got where the product can be used, some security test, and one last image of the Fix Dry ND1. So I just let this filament dry for another hour. I had also done this last night. As you can see, it got down to 23% in there. I'm going to power it off. Now let's take it to the P1S and give it a test. All right, so taking out filament, super simple. You just grab and pull. Once that one's removed, I will lock it in place. Here comes the next one. Wind that back just a little bit. And we simply push it in till it grabs and feeds. That's how easy it is to swap filament in the bamboo B1S. All right, so with that ABS dry, we're gonna test it on the bamboo labs P1S, if you've never used one of these, they are absolutely amazing. I'm going to start by grabbing my part. I am going to print a Pisca bug. So this is a bug that I created in Tinkercad. When you squeeze the back, the jaw comes down so it works like a clip. It's going to say Mount Pisca on it because that's where I'll leave it. And of course, it's got the HL Mod Tech logo as well. We're going to switch to ABS. I'm going to simply click up here where it said generic PLA. I need to go down and find generic ABS. I have never used it before, so I'm going to hit add. Now let's do a quick look and see if we have Hatchbox in here or if I just need to do generic. I do not see Hatchbox, so I'm going to just simply do generic ABS. Bingo. And confirm it. On a previous project, I had the prime tower shut off. I am just going to discard that value. I change those all the time. And now let's reset number one. I want to find that ABS. There's my generic ABS. I do not want the strength one. I am just going to use the standard 0.2 for this project. And then I also want to make this a little smaller. If I simply click on my shape and move over to the scale option, I can adjust it. I like printing these at 45 millimeters. So I simply type that and press enter. The rest of them all scale to match. This is going to be a single color print. So of course, no need for the prime tower. It would have probably figured that out anyway. Now I can simply hit slice plate. Now with that filament loaded, let's switch to the device menu and we need to go to our AMS. So it still thinks this is PLA. I wanna edit that and I'm gonna switch it to generic ABS. Now it knows the correct temperatures. I am gonna put the color to white and I'm gonna tell it confirm. And now when we back up to our prepare, of course we have sliced it. And now when we back up, we can hit print plate. Notice it already expects it to be ABS on the A1 and we can simply send it to the 3D printer. After a moment, the device menu pops up. Of course, we can hit play, and you'll be able to monitor your print from wherever you're at. And about 20 minutes later, bingo, we have got an awesome little flexible bug. How cool is that? All right, so a quick review. Oh my goodness cannot believe how awesome this ABS printed. Once again, ancient filament dried with the Fix Dry NT1 and then printed on the Bamboo Labs P1S. Absolutely love these results. 
Alright friends, so a quick review. This is the Tinkercad bug. There is a full tutorial. I'll make sure it is available in the cards and the description. And of course friends, these are the results after running that filament through the Fixed Dry NT1 and the Bamboo Labs P1S. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. Of course, I've got the page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you scroll down just a little bit more, you will find my course, Tinkercad in 20 Days. It is hosted on cadclass.org. If you check this video, it explains all about it. And if you check the bottom, you will find a coupon code 25HL Tinkercad. It will get you 25% off any course on the site. Of course, you can visit the site by simply clicking the link. Friends, of course, I do want to remind you about the sweet built-in message tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. I also want to highlight the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members and it is a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget to absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me. HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.